Hello guys, thank you for coming to the OLED Wave channel. Today we're going to be sharing from OpenAS Whisper to your own in-house ASR service, the return on investment, aka ROI analysis. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and join our meetups. I have a video which is the part one overview. Uh, feel free to check it if you haven't done so. Today is a part two ROI, and there will be three sections: uh, data, R and D, and DevOps. Uh, because data and R and D together, they have uh, one common return metric, which is accuracy. Uh, this is why I put everything on this figure. And you can see that suppose you are starting from ground zero or scratches, you'll be going from zero on this blue curve. And you can see that at the beginning, even you spend a lot of uh, investment, your return would be kind of uh, still low. After you uh, uh, reaching some tipping point, then you will be receiving some real gain. And uh, by the time you reach the a good to go line and your uh, investment would be very very high uh, when i mentioned the good to go line i usually meant in in order to launch your asr service for your product you have to reach an accuracy of about for example 85 percent 90 percent and uh, let's see the whisper model we talk about in the part one um, i think most of you already know that this model has a license of a CCBY, is completely okay or free to use it for commercial business purpose. And you can see, usually when you're starting from this model, you literally has not spent much thing, right? But sometimes or most of the time, you're still a little bit far from good to go line. Uh, usually it was because either your case has the, the English or language has a lot of accent or the background noise issue or the topic related uh, don't indomain specific issues which block you from to get into the good to go line all you have to do is to get a little bit data investment on the data and uh, uh, explore the PEFT primary efficient fine tune methods and then you'll be easily get above the good to go line and launch your own service. And you may see that uh, while well, you spend a lot of money and the deal, finally there will be still a gap between uh, the um, uh, blue and the red curve. That was because the whisper model was trained with 680 thousands of hours of a speech data with transcription. And now the whisper version three uses millions of hours of data to train which means the model has already have lots of investment but that investment was not on you was but that was on open ai so you save that money so you can see that eventually even uh lots of people companies they have invested lots of money including the gpu cluster they're way behind the open ai that's why their gap is there but think about a company like Google or Microsoft that they are consistently investing in, in the uh, speech recognition technology because they want to be the, the number one speech recognition API provider on the market. Uh, so they tend to care less about ROI. And uh, once they have a large, large research group, I personally believe that they may achieve certain type of a breakthrough in the future and uh, but it's a long story then that will be the, the investment will be extremely high uh, but the part one we have the data roi before launching or to launch arsr service uh, in the next slide i will have the data roi after you launch the asr service when you want to improve the asr service uh, i categorize the approaches into four main categories the first is easy to understand call api and your return on asr is fairly low because you would experience 
domain mismatch, accent mismatch, uh, language mismatch, etc. But your ROI is okay. And this is built from scratch, scratches, uh, including Google, Microsoft, uh, these companies. Uh, and definitely, it doesn't mean that Google or Microsoft, the large company, will go build from scratches. In the past, there are small companies which are also doing, doing this. Um, you can see that you have to use your production data and you have to have a dedicated internal team to label this data. So your investment will be high, but your return is medium to high level. Because it's, like I said, speech recognition is a, a relatively low ROI investment compared to computer vision and NLP. And then this is an order from vendors. Uh, it doesn't mean that you're calling the vendor's API. That means you ask the vendor to come to your site and build the ASR to run on your, within your own company or in-house service. Uh, if you do not have any product, the, the vendor tends to give you some pre-recorded data to start with. But if you have accumulated some data, they would be providing the production data for you to use, or the label them, right? Um, at the, the, before the launch, I think lots of the small company, they tend not to uh, have their internal data team to engage at this stage. Um, but definitely, it depends on you, right? So the investment could be either medium or high. And the return on ASR is low to medium. The reason was that the reason uh, the return wasn't very high, like I said, it was because of the communication. Remember that the vendor and the you are not in the same company. And at this stage, it needs, it needs lots of communication. It's different than Google, Microsoft. The data team and the algorithm team are in the same company. They're easy to communicate, right? And then the ROI is also low. Uh, the last approach, which is the approach that our OLED way recommends is building from Whisper. If you do not know what this means, go to our part one and overview, right? Uh, we explain what the Whisper is and how to use uh, OpenAI's Whisper to start off to fine tune your own speech recognition service model. Uh, different than using the pre recorded data or production data, which requires a lot of communication between you and the vendor. We leverage the real data from the wild or the public. So it's completely just to get the data that the suitor needs, which does not evolve with either a match data or the data needs us to label on, right? In this case, most of the work are done by us. There's not much communication need to be done between us and your data team. And the investment, I would say this is a low, right? And in return, because we are leveraging the foundation model, which was provided open AI, which has already have a large or huge amount of data in the model. So even small fine tune procedure can get us really good, good ASR accuracy and the ROI is high. So a lot of you may ask, uh, wait, do you have any concrete numbers to support your proof? I would definitely do this in the next session, not this session, but today would be just an overview of the ROI analysis. So this is, after you launch it, you want to improve the ASR service. Again, call API, you can do nothing. And build from scratches, you still have to, these are all the same, and uh, your investment would be keeping higher and higher. Um, when you order from the vendor, then this time it will purely your production data. And because you launch a service, you start to accumulate your own production data. And this time your internal team has to be involved with the vendor. So the communication will be more. Like I said, when you have more communications, it will actually reduce the efficiency. Then your ASR accuracy wise, there's no guarantee that it could be a, a very high accuracy. And uh, talking about our approach, when we build from Whisper, again, we're not planning to uh, label your production data or heavily rely on that. Uh, we mainly would be relying on the real data from Modpaglica again, but 
some data up to date because suppose we launch a service in 2021, but today this year is 2023, you want to have the latest in-domain data that is suits your scenario and have the latest entity words incorporated into your service. Okay. And this one, you still, we, we do not require a dedicated internal data team to work with us. Most of the work will be on us because we're just providing you more up-to-date data from the world of public to you, other than just the work with you on labeling the, your existing production data, which takes a lot of communication and time. So you can see the investment over there is still low. But why do I say medium? Because there would be some communication between us and you in the, at this stage. Um, and your accuracy return would be medium to high, and your ROI is high. But R&D ROI, I think this is very interesting because uh, imagine that you're a, a large company like Google or Microsoft, uh, you would definitely uh, would be hiring a dedicated speech R&D team. In that case, the investment cost would be very, very high. Um, because imagine that you have a uh, R&D team of uh, hundreds of people. And then for mid size or smaller companies, um, I, I say some vendors, okay? The vendors are in this case. Sometimes they build from scratches. They have a dedicated machine learning engineering team, and, but their invest is still very high because they already have dozens of people uh, team-wise. Then why in this case, Google or Microsoft didn't get a very, really, very, very high ASR accuracy because once you reach a tipping point of investment, the gain um, you get per dollar start to decreasing. Okay, this is why uh, for Google their ROI on speech recognition is very low, but they want to get the number one uh, flagship stuff in the community. They have to do this. Uh, again, call about call API is pretty easy to understand. There's still nothing you can do. Um, the third one, order from vendor. In this case, uh, you may have to have a machine learning engineering team working together with vendors R&D team. In this case, the, the cost wouldn't be low. And then, like I said, there will be communication. So your accuracy would be behind Google or Microsoft. Um, the, the time... I remember that lots of vendors, they compare their API's performance with Google API's performance on a specific domain, which I think that's not fair. Because think about the fair comparison, and because they are comparing their stuff with the call API performance, right? The investment is not comparable, right? For the call API, you almost invest in nothing, but in order to get something API you talked about, you have to invest a lot of money on the customizing the ASR service. Uh, so you cannot just compare the returns individually. But if you look at the ROI, they're roughly the same, right? Uh, and then think about uh, Google's YouTube closed captioning service. Um, they're fairly good. I would highly doubt whether any vendors there to compare their API service performance on the YouTube closed captioning with Google's own performance because Google, Google's one, their accuracy accuracy is very, very high. It's better, for, especially for those entity words. The last one, building from Whisper, uh, the approach we recommended, you basically work with us. So we are also a vendor, but don't forget this. You, actually also worked with OpenAI because Whisper model, they're getting new updates almost a six month, every six months. And the, Whisper, the OpenAI's R&D team is not like Microsoft, the Google's R&D team. They're willing to share their findings, especially their models, their latest model with you guys. So you benefit from them and you do not have to pay one dime for that. This is why your investment would be low under this case, but actually you, what you get is more than that. This is why you can get a very high or high ROI. The third one, uh, DevOps. Uh, I think DevOps is very sophisticated. I only talk about the generals, okay? Uh, for the call API, you can see this. 
But when you build from scratches, you'd have to have a dedicated uh, DevOps team. That means your investment return would be high, but your ROI would be roughly the same as a core API. Uh, when you order from the vendor, suppose you want to deploy your service on your own cloud or by yourself, uh, then you probably have to work with the vendor. Again, communication is evolved here, right? And then return won't be high. It's like a medium. Uh, when they talk about return metrics, there are four things mentioned by Atlassian. Uh, you can definitely Google these things, but I won't talk about this today, especially about the concrete numbers. I will definitely cover this in the following uh, sessions or following parts of this series. The last one, uh, what we recommended, you can see that you still work with us, with a, with a vendor, but don't forget this. There is an open source community working around the Whisper model. Uh, if you want a streaming model, if you want to have a, a smaller model which can be deployed on the Edge device, or you want to have timestamps, uh, the open source community uh, almost have everything there for you for free. So their investment could be kept low. And also you have the experienced technical consulting service from us uh, we can tell you what are the potential issues in those open source toolkit. So in this way, you do not have to have DevOps teams, but you, you have a way of, of um, getting around the traps that are embedded in those open source toolkits. And your return would be relatively high, and your ROI beats the above three methods. Uh, last thing is the cloud cost. I wouldn't uh, categorize or divide those four methods because every four methods except the call API method has to use the public method. The other three ways, you can either use a public cloud or on-premise or private cloud. Okay, so when I talk about the call volume, I meant the number of calls in the period of time. Suppose you have a, this is a medical transcription. Uh, you have 10,000 calls per day. That's your call volume. And depends on whether your call volume is low or high, your investment for the public cloud is different because uh, in this case, it will be purely about the second item here, cloud subscription fee. Okay? And if you're using on-premise cloud, that will be purely the first one, the cloud and build and maintenance cost and the electricity cost and the maintenance, right? So this won't change very much. Uh, in terms of return, it's the same as DevOps uh, return I mentioned last, last slide. And uh, um, to conclude those four points into one point, I think you can refer that to something called net promoter score, which is highly correlated with customer satisfaction, okay? And depends on uh, whether this is low or high volume, you can see that uh, if you have very high volume, I would highly recommend you to use the, the on-premise cloud or private cloud because in that case, you can guarantee uh, your customer satisfaction and you have a long-term return and you have a long-term uh, benefit in, in regarding the investment. All right, I think I will stop here. Uh, if you like our channel, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and you get the latest uh, updates of our recordings about the speech and NLP techniques. And again, we are a data vendor. Different than traditional vendors, we help you to create customized text, visual, and voice data sets for training your large language models, computer vision models, ASR models, and even multi-model AI models. Um, and we have these uh, benefits, um, efficacy, delivery time, and the pricing. And also we do technical consulting because we are very experienced in the speech and NLP domain compared to the data vendors. All right, thanks for watching our uh, channel. And I wish I can get feedbacks from you. And don't forget to subscribe our channel. Thank you.